Welcome back to the kitchen, you guys, here at My Table 3. If you're new, my name is Carrie, and I share all about food preservation, recipes, and basically life in the kitchen. So today, I thought I would share another one of our favorite holiday sides. It was a toss-up between this. If you're watching this video, and if you've seen my last video, I did a recent collaboration with Renee over at Pikes Creek Farm for an indulgent collaboration, the 12 Days of Christmas Indulgence. In that video, I shared one of our favorite holiday appetizers. It was like the um, brown sugar glazed little smoky. So if you haven't seen that video, I'll try and put a card up top and the link to that video below. But when I was trying to figure out what to do for Renee's collaboration, I kind of went back and forth between those little smokies and this uh, recipe that I'm going to share today. And you'll definitely see why, because it's definitely an indulgent recipe. I call it a holiday special because it is one that I would only make on special occasions or during the holidays like we are right now. So um, this recipe is actually a really cheesy, I mean, it's just the best mac and cheese I've ever had. And it was made by my Aunt Sheila. The first time I ate it was on Thanksgiving. So I've been making it now for a few times and I wanted to share it with you guys here on the channel because it's such a different recipe than I'm used to. Normally with mac and cheese, you know, you make a roux with flour and butter and all the cheese and the milk. This one is a little bit different. So those of you that may be intimidated by making a roux and your own cheese sauce, I think this would be super easy for you. Now it is a process that you have to trust maybe a little different to you because it was to me and I was super nervous the first time I made it because it just didn't look like it would turn out but it turns out excellent and I always the last this is the third time I've made it for our family gathering today um the last two times I made it it was there was nothing left basically it was all eaten so tried and true and it is amazing so let's jump into the kitchen I got everything set up over here I'm going to show you how I make this extra cheesy mac and cheese you won't believe how easy it is and it's definitely a holiday indulgence because it is full of butter and milk and velveta cheese and all the goodness so let's jump over and make the best mac and cheese you may have already had or maybe you've never had it but you really should try it so let's get to cooking all right so step one we have our 16 cups of water this is a recipe where you have to trust the process like i was really nervous too but you have to trust the process. So this is 16 cups of water. Remember, I am doubling the recipe. So I'm using two pounds of pasta because we have a big crowd to feed today. So I'm gonna go ahead and salt my water really generously. Probably not enough salt, but we'll taste as we go. Because you're not actually gonna drain the mac and cheese. So I'm gonna let this water come up to boil. It won't take long on this conduction burner. And then we will come back and I will show you Basically, the next step is just pouring the pasta in. Once the water comes to a boil, we'll pour the, pour the pasta in and let it boil until it is tender. So, I'll be back when it's time to pour that in. Okay, so the water is boiling. We are going to add our two pounds of pasta. I'm going to put the recipe below, like I said. Now, it'll just be for a single batch. And then you can double if you need to. Remember, we are going to a family... Christmas gathering today and so this is going to feed a large crowd like probably about 30 30 to 35 people maybe even 40 so I'm making a, a pretty big batch uh, so everybody can at least get a couple of spoonfuls so now um, we are going to go ahead and I did add a little bit more salt to this um, but you know you won't add any more salt later until you get it all mixed up and then you can taste and adjust the pepper and the salt but now I'm just going to let this um, go ahead and boil until it is tender and we will be back and show you how we get the cheese and everything else mixed in all right so the macaroni is done it has completed cooking you can see there's plenty of water still in there you know your your <laughs> instinct would be to um drain it but guess what we're not going to so the i'm going to add the butter so this is enough butter for a double batch. Put that in. And then this is the Velveeta cheese. The cheese I was talking about would definitely indulgent. Like it's not something I don't think I ever buy it except at the holidays. Or sometimes at Nate's birthday party. I um um I'm gonna use my clean hand. 
Um, actually, I'm not. I'm just kind of put it in there. Hopefully, it won't splash up. I buy it at Nathan's birthday party sometimes when he wants nacho cheese, but it's not something I buy a lot because, you know, it's just not something I buy a lot. But it makes this mac and cheese extraordinary. And yes, this pot's going to be absolutely full. And it looks really runny. And I know if you're anything like I am, you were terrified at this. So we're going to go ahead and kind of let this melt. But I am going to go ahead and add some black pepper. We're going to stir it in. I'm not going to salt it until later when I taste it. Because the butter is salted. And remember, our water is salted. So... Okay, I'm going to, now I turn the heat off under this for now. I'm going to put a lid on it and let it sit for a few minutes until this cheese, these hunks of cheese melt down. And then we're going to come back and we're going to add our uh, milk, our evaporated milk, and give it a good stir and show you what it looks like before we let it sit to thicken up. All right, you guys, so I got this totally melted. Now, I will tell you this. I had um, about a half a cup of Munster cheese that I needed to get rid of, so I threw it in there, so... Um, that's not in the recipe, but I wanted to tell you that's why there's a little bit of stringiness in there. It's because I use that Munster, but you don't, it does not call for, I just thought, hey, I want to get rid of that because it needs to be used up. So I threw it in there. And then I know it still looks really runny, but we're also going to add one can of evaporated milk. I'm going to go ahead and add that. I just poured it in this thing. And we are going to stir it. <clears throat> okay, now I turn the burner back on. We're going to cook it just for a few more minutes. We're going to let it come back to a boil. But you want to stir it the whole time because you don't want that cheese uh, to scorch or burn on the bottom. And <laughs> this pot is really full. So if you double this batch, make sure you have a huge stock pot. Probably a little bit bigger than the one I got. But honestly, I need to get a larger one. Other than my stainless steel one I use for canning sometimes. This is the only one I have. And I'm using this conduction burner. So you guys have more light. And you can see the pan close up. So this only works with this pot. I need to get more conduction pots. Bigger ones probably. But this is going to work fine. I'm just going to keep stirring. I'm going to bring it back to a boil. And once it comes back to a boil... I'm going to turn it off, and I'm going to put the lid on it, and we're going to let the magic happen. Because, yes, 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 it's terrifying, I know, because who wants soupy mac and cheese like this? But, I've made this three times now. I made the first time for my Thanksgiving with, um, um, I'm going to change my, to this, because I don't want to scorch, so it's too high. Uh, made it for my husband's. Thanksgiving with my husband's side of the family. The first time I had this was at Thanksgiving with my aunt and my mom this year. And she made it, my Aunt Sheila. All my mom's sisters are wonderful cooks and my mom. So, we were really blessed to grow up with all that. But my Aunt Sheila, I don't know where she got the recipe. But she's the one made it for Thanksgiving. And we all really liked it. I ate a few bites of it. And Nathan really ate a lot of it. And he loved it. So, I made it for our Thanksgiving to take to Anthony's family a few days later and they were all impressed and so I made it also for what was that I made this for oh I made it for Nate's homeschool Christmas party about three days ago and um, I didn't know anybody else was bringing mac and cheese so I made a huge pot like this because again there was about 40 or 50 kids there and I'll put a picture on the screen here they set two macaroni and cheeses side by side and mine is the empty one. So, yeah. I guess it went over good, right? Alright. So, that I'm actually going to go ahead. It's simmering a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and turn this off. Because I don't want the bottom to scorch. And I'm going to put my lid on. And it's going to set. Probably until it cools down and thickens up. And that actually takes probably about an hour or a little bit after. So I'm going to let this sit right here. And I will come back and show you what it looks like when it's all magically thick. So I will be right back. Okay, I wanted to give you guys a quick look. You can already see how it is um, thickening up. This has, been, this has been setting for about 20 minutes. Well, yeah, about 20 minutes since I 
uh, turn the camera off last and you can already see how it's thickening up and I'm gonna let it sit again like I said you need to plan ahead because this will need to set for about an hour hour and a half maybe to thicken up and then you can reheat it what I do is I put it in a crock pot once it gets thick enough um, and I let it stay warm in the crock pot and that way it stays warm uh, turn it on the lowest setting so definitely warm because you don't want the cheese to burn but yeah it's already thickening up so I'm just gonna keep letting it set and I'll come back and show you when I'm ready to put it into the crock pot so it smells divine you guys this will not dry out it also freezes well my aunt said that you can put it in tin pans or glass baking dishes whatever you want to freeze in and it does remarkably well and it won't be dry it's going to stay um thick and creamy like this so i'll come back when it's sticking up more okay guys so i emptied this out you can see that there and here it is um i kind of need you can see how thick and creamy it is now it's still a little bit thinner than some may like it but i like mine like this and remember as it continues to set in the crock pot it will still thicken up a little bit so this is going to be perfect now i just have a smaller crock pot so i ended up having this bowl right here left over so if you guys have a large crock pot that you really like and enjoy let me know what brand it is in the comments and um like where you got it because i really need a new larger crock pot because this is a smaller one you can see but that'll be plenty and uh, here are my yeast rolls that I baked, and I got those there. And I'm going to go ahead and plug this in on warm, and then we will head out, probably leave in about an hour or so, an uh, hour and a half, and this will be ready to go by then. So I'll show you what it looks like um, before we serve it, probably, and then <laughs> how much is left afterwards after the family eat. So talk to you soon. All right, guys, so we just got home, and I am about to... This is what was left of the mac and cheese. It is all gone. <laughs> and now I'm going to put it in to soak into the dishes. But you can see this thing was full. And it was gone and gone pretty fast. So another hit. All right, guys. That is it for the easy. I'm going to call it holiday mac and cheese. Because that's what I'll be making it for. Since it's so rich and indulgent. It's perfect for a holiday treat. And you see it goes pretty fast. So... As always, thank you guys for coming by and watching the videos. If you're new, I'd appreciate you giving me a thumbs up. And if you like what you see, stick around and subscribe so we can have more adventures together in the kitchen. As always, you guys, thank you so much. Happy holidays and Merry Christmas. See you next time.